Welcome to Mission Diane Watch Santa Barbara, week 12. Hello. We've watched episode 56, originally aired October 15, 1984. Cece stops Santana from going into Gina's house, mm -hmm. forces her back into her car, and starts driving. I thought they were driving back to Santa Barbara, but it turns out they uh, drive to the airport, because mm -hmm. the next thing you know, Dominic is flying them back to Santa Barbara. Yes. Uh, CC spends the whole trip telling her, you know, why it would be so bad for him to see Brandon, and uh, he just tells her things she already knows and doesn't think are really reasons not to. Yes. Uh, when they're in the plane, uh, Dominic, who's flying, is eavesdropping on things. Uh, they don't actually mention that Channing is the father of Santana's baby, but Dominic pretty much knows now that Santana had a baby, that Cece gave it to Gina and Stockman, mm -hmm. who, you know, wanted a kid, and Stockman always wanted a boy. So Santana says that um, she's just going to go right back to L.A. the next day. Yeah. And Cece says that if she does that, they're finished. And I thought um, it was kind of interesting, the, the look on Dominic's face as she's listening to all of this. Um, and I was thinking that if she is Sophia, you know, maybe she had conversations like this with CC when she was married to him. Mm. And that maybe she's sort of seeing herself in some aspect of this conversation. Um, it did seem to me that she had kind of a concerned look on her face. So there was just something about it. She was, she seemed to be very interested in it and, and be relating to it in, in a way that went beyond just, you know, sort of interest in gossip or idle curiosity. Mm hmm I mean, just to a third party hearing it, an old man telling a woman that uh, it's fine that he took her baby. Yeah. <laughs> and she should never see him. It's definitely Cece doesn't come off well from No, from he doesn't. Parties. And I mean it is it is hardcore, you know, um that this woman is not allowed to see her baby. I mean people go to court for this sort of thing. Mm -hmm. It I think sort of shows just what a rarefied realm CC lives in and the kind of power he feels entitled to. Mm -hmm. He says it would be disruptive to see him, but then Santana says, well, you've been seeing him for five years, and, yeah. and yeah. how is that not disruptive? Yeah, uh, CC doesn't really see any sort of problem with his um, logic in this, whereas I think the average viewer and Dominic, whether she's invested in this or not, definitely is seeing the bigger picture. Mm -hmm. Now, Eden shows up as Cruz's houseboat, uh, looks around a little bit for his uh, communications equipment, just to kind of tease him a bit, I think. Mentions that she saved him by mm -hmm. pushing her way into one of his projects in Europe. Um, and then she says she would like him to provide her with any intelligence that he gathers about new oil deposits mm -hmm. uh, before he tells Cece or Mason. Yes. Uh, he says no. And then she says, well, then I'm going to blow your cover. So that's kind of a It seems very counterproductive to me, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and then she says she she's going to the beach, and he can answer her later if, she, if he wants. Uh, meanwhile, at the beach, she briefly encounters Summer, but then Warren shows up and starts to argue with Summer, so Eden moves off. Um, then Eden, uh, Cruz does show up at the beach again and says, you know, if someone blew his cover, he would just start over and find it, have a new, make a new cover. Mm -hmm. um, but first, uh, he would just turn her family against her. <laughs> It does seem to be um, what they used to call mutually assured self-destruction if, mm -hmm. if Eden and Cruz turn on each other because it sounds like they both have so many secrets and so much on each other that they could actually mm -hmm. do a lot of damage to each other. So I think Cruz is right to call Eden on her threat. Cruz mentioned something that Mason had previously uh, mentioned that Eden had borrowed money from her trust fund. 
But Cruz also mentioned that she blew it all mm -hmm. and that he could uh, tell Cece what she did to try to get it back. Yes. So there's a secret yeah. that uh, we look forward to finding out about. Yes. And then as he leaves, he says, for what it's worth, you look real good. So this is a potential. I guess they had a thing there. in the past, maybe? I think that, that was implied uh, in one yeah, of the previous conversations. I think so. Uh, Mr. Bottoms thinks Ted was behind the camel incident, mm -hmm. and to punish Ted, he makes the entire class scrub the floors uh, to get the smell of camels out. He says this may take, may take weeks. So more quality education from Yeah, Lyman. another full day of Lyman I'm education. I'm sure Danny's getting a much, much better coursework at his sort of low-level school. Yeah. Um, now, Danny does come by to say hi to Ted and the gang and ask about the motel, or Ted asks him about the motel. Mm -hmm. He says he hasn't had time to, to, to uh, do any of the tasks to, to clean up the hotel that he promised because Cruz is making him work out twice a day. Mm -hmm. I think this is to help him with his soccer career. It's, it's I think set. so, because if you remember a few episodes back, Danny got humiliated on the soccer field when his school was playing Lyman, so I think mm -hmm. he wants to get a little payback on that. Yeah, so he's on a heavy regimen of working out. Mm -hmm. uh, Marissa shows up to tell Amy that, uh, or to tell Jade that Amy's coming home for Joe's memorial service. Yes. Um, then later we see Cruz uh, and Danny together. Cruz is telling Danny he's got to wear uh, 20 pound weights while he runs on the beach, and then when Danny wants a, a rest, he makes him do another hundred sit-ups. Yeah. So it's like uh, Drill Sergeant Cruz. Augusta complains that Brick has too many muscles and he knows it. <laughs> so Lionel had wondered why he was, she was being so negative about Brick. Um, they do try to get Brick to explain where Minx found him, but he says he doesn't know. Mm -hmm. uh, he was just racing motorcycles in Las Vegas, and Augusta doesn't buy that. No. Uh, Lionel tells Augusta what he's been working on. He talks about the wreck of the Amanda Lockridge, mm -hmm. which uh, was shipwrecked a hundred years ago just off the coast of Santa Barbara, carrying a uh, fortune in paintings that belong to the Lockridge family. Now, the first thing that I thought of is something Augusta didn't think of, and Lionel hasn't mentioned. Um, paintings at the bottom Underwater. of the ocean for a hundred yeah, years. Yeah, yeah, I thought of that too. I was hoping it was going to be gold doubloons, because that yeah. would still be fine underwater. So, yeah. I suspect that even if Lionel finds the ship, his, uh, his, you know, returning the Lockridge fortune to its former glory may, may amount to nothing if all he has is paper mache under there. Well, think about how much work they go to in a quality museum to make sure the air is right and make sure, you know, everything is, is perfect for the um, environment mm -hmm. of their old paintings. Yeah, so yeah, that was a shock to find out the yeah, treasure is paintings. I... Ah, and that also the, the Capwells hadn't already looted it. <laughs> yes, that's right. Um, so Augusta mentions she's worried about Summer, knowing, you know, about the coins. Mm -hmm. Lionel tells Warren that that's, that's his weak link, and he should just, just dispose of the coins as soon as possible, or they yeah, that could end up sense. in jail. I thought that made sense. Yeah. At the beach, Warren tries to apologize to Summer, and she rebukes him a few times, but then eventually decides she'll let him help her move into, his, yeah. into her new apartment. So, um, in the... In the old church, Joe reveals himself to Kelly that he's alive and mentions that he was the one following her both in the car and earlier in the morning when she thought she saw someone in the bushes when she was jogging. Uh, so they find a barn to have sex in and some gross-looking horse blankets. Mm -hmm. And um, at some point while they're napping, um, the Russian lady walks in. Yes, we see, well, we don't see all of her, but we see her legs with her signature anklet little dress. anklet. Yeah. Um, can't imagine how they found Joe, since, you know, he must have swum ashore somewhere and 
Yes, well, we don't really know what happened after, you know, he ran away from his his captors. Mm -hmm. And we, we have no idea what happened in that span of time between them and him showing up in the church. So they might have been following him the whole time. Mm -hmm. But it's been, you know, if he's been following Kelly all day, mm -hmm. it's odd that they would, I don't know, it's odd that they would have found him at all, let alone been able to follow him all day. Mm -hmm. so. And that's it. That's all that happened in this episode. That's it. So we will return when we watch episode 57 of Santa Barbara. See you later. Hello, and welcome back to Mission Diane Watch Santa Barbara. Hello. We finished episode 57, original air date October 16th, 1984. Mm -hmm. Cece is arranging for Gina to go to the French Riviera with Brandon, but he wants Gina to tell everyone they're going to the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. So he's really worried that Santana's going to try and see Brandon, and he wants to stop it. Yes. No matter he's what. He's being very sneaky. He says he'll... Meet them at the airport, and she can sign over a power of attorney to him. Now, what does he mean by that? What is it he's trying to do? Well, that? I guess he needs to run all of Gina's affairs with Stockman dead. So mm. she's probably got a big portfolio that she's inherited, or in the process of inheriting. And, uh, yeah, she's probably involved in the probate and stuff like that. So yeah, he's uh, going to do that all for her. Ah. Uh, sounds to me like he's, he'd want her to be out of town for a long time, then, if he's doing that. Yes, it does sound like it's going to be quite a long trip. So Rosa tells uh, Santana that she heard Cece talking to Gina about a trip. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Cece tells Santana that she could see Brandon for one day, perhaps, in a, at a picnic. And then she can sign a document giving up all future rights to him. She does not agree to sign this document. She's very angry about it. She's very insulted, and I think it uh, says a lot that Cece doesn't quite understand why she's having no, problems No, he with says, this. oh, you, I don't think you've thought this through properly. You've given me the wrong answer. <laughs> <laughs> Augusta would like to know what kinds of paintings might be aboard the Amanda Lockridge. Soggy ones, I would think. Lionel is waiting for the manifest. Um, but he says it could be Rembrandts and Da Vinci's and Renoir's. Summer comes over, meets Lionel, and mm -hmm. promptly asks him to be a guest lecturer uh, at a series of uh, lectures he's putting on, and he agrees. Uh, he gets to choose the topic, so he's picked primitive love as reflected in oceanic art, mm -hmm. which Summer says is his specialty. And Augusta says, you're in for a treat. Make sure the censors are stopped at the gate. <laughs> Sounds like she's heard this um, talk and uh, Lionel's rambling about his, uh, associated subjects quite a bit during their marriage. It could be. Uh, Warren tells Augusta he plans to sell the coins and takes them from his lockbox, which he's been seen carrying around everywhere, and shoves them all in his jacket pocket. I wondered if the plan to sell them was really the best, since I would think that would arouse some suspicion. Mm -hmm. Since they are stolen property, I imagine there are, even back in 1984, they would be on. There would be some record somewhere of this particular type of stolen coin. His comment from a previous episode that he could melt them down would probably actually be a better. I would think solution. so. Um. He goes to the uh, Capwell Hotel to help Summer carry mm -hmm. her bags, because he's helping her move into her new place. Uh, throws his jacket on the chair, and one of the coins falls out of his pocket. Mm -hmm. uh, later on, Santana comes by to ask Summer about Gina's trip, but Summer wasn't even aware that Gina's going on a trip. Mm -hmm. And then the porter, who's also helping move stuff out, uh, spots the coin. Warren's already gone by this point, so he gives it to Kelly, who's come over. And Kelly's there because she's gotten the bright idea that the presidential suite would be a really great place for her and Joe to hide. Mm -hmm. And it would be this beautiful, luxurious place where they could have one perfect night together. Mm -hmm. Could be, as long as there's not a two-way mirror yes, that her well, fiancé is uh, clearly in she control doesn't know of. about that. 
I think uh, Peter might see something unexpected. Yeah. Uh, Cruz is continuing his training of Danny for his soccer skills. Mm -hmm. Eden arrives and says, oh, little Danny Andrade. Mm -hmm. and Danny seems to be quite taken with Eden. Uh, Cece sends him off to go play in a field. Mm -hmm. And um, Eden and Cruz have a little talk. Doesn't uh, cover any new ground. So. Mm -hmm. uh, Eden goes home and asks uh, CC if he considers Santana to be Sophia's replacement. Mm -hmm. Basically, his answer is no, but he hopes Santana will be in his life for a long time. Which is odd, considering the argument they've just had. Yeah, I was thinking I, I wouldn't bet on it. So, Brick is driving Augusta around in his role as chauffeur. She asks about his family, and uh, one interesting thing he mentions is that his mother is in the circus, and uh, that he was an assistant lion tamer for a while. Mm -hmm. uh, he kind of uh, mentions that as a kind of a parallel to his having to deal with Minx and Augusta, I think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, Augusta gives him some direction that he says, well, I work for Minx. Yeah. And Augusta says that she's the real woman behind the Lockridge throne. And then Brick says, like Lady Macbeth. Mm -hmm. So I, I saw a few things in this. Um, first of all, I think uh, Augusta is a, a bit delusional if she thinks she's the font of power in that family because mm -hmm. clearly Minx, um, you know, she's already said that she can have Lionel taken off the board. Mm -hmm. And she's she clearly um, actually does wield a lot of power. And she owns the house, and she owns, or thought she owned the beachfront property. That slipped away from them, but clearly she she is the power in the family. Um, I also wondered um, a little bit about Bricks and sort of what his whole relationship is. And I guess everyone's trying to figure that out. Um, he mentions that his mother, of course, was in the circus. He mentions that he doesn't know who his dad is. And he mentions that he had studied anthropology, and this, to me, seems like kind of an interesting detail because that's not a really common subject to study, and that is very much Lionel's specialty. So I wondered if there might be some connection between Brick and the Lockridges that maybe Brick isn't aware of. Some sort of family, family connection, maybe mm -hmm. through this uh, missing father? But that Minx... Does that, know about. But that Minx has researched and uh, acted on. The Russians wait for Kelly to leave before they go into the bar mm -hmm. to talk to Joe, and they say that uh, uh, they can help each other out. Now, Joe doesn't want to help communists, but they say that they can help him hide out, and they want something from him in exchange, which I don't think they've, they've uh, stated yet. No. Uh, he says he'll think about it. Kelly comes back with breakfast, and they talk about uh, who they can trust. Uh, Kelly suggests Peter, and so says, no, we can't trust Peter at all. So they come up with Ted. Um, Cruz. Cruz. Um, Kelly wonders about Dominic, but Joe says that Dominic is really a woman and has been hiding things from them, so they, they don't think they can trust Dominic. It's funny because I was sure he had told her that Dominic was a woman, but thinking back, he maybe he just mentioned that she was wearing a disguise. Mm -hmm. I think maybe that was it. So Joe says, uh, let's tell Jade and Marissa, but not John. Yeah. Um, so Kelly goes, and that's when she, she goes to the Capwell Hotel because uh, she wants to book that room for them. And uh, Kelly manages to get Jade away from John and Marissa and tells, uh, brings her to Joe. Mm -hmm. And uh, so Jade's happy that Joe's alive and says, Oh, I'm going to tell everyone. And you have to say, No, we have to keep this a secret. So uh, Jade's supposed to tell Marissa, mm -hmm. but uh, she doesn't actually manage to do it before the memorial service. So um, at the memorial service, Cruz gives a long eulogy and Mentions finding the real killer, which makes Augusta a little concerned. Um, Kelly shows Ted the coin she found. Uh, Jade kind of tries to whisper something to Marissa about Joe, but John's sitting right next to her, so mm -hmm. I don't think uh, I don't think she 
at the appropriate time, really, at no, this point. No, no. And Dominic arrives. Uh, he had phoned earlier. She had phoned earlier mm -hmm. to uh, ask if only family were allowed and, and had been told that friends could come, too. So Dominic's standing in the back. Kelly's standing in the back. Uh, pretty much everyone else is seated, I think. Mm -hmm. Ted and Lakin. And, uh, yeah, so it's the Perkinses, Ted and Lakin, Augusta, Dominic, and Cruz at this memorial service. And we got to meet a new Perkins in this episode. Oh, that's right. Amy came home. Yeah. So yeah. I, I I guess she's the, is she the big sister? Is she older than Joe and, J I mean, obviously older than Jade, I would think. But. Hmm. I'm not sure. They seem, she and Joe seem about the same age. Mm hmm So. She did, what do we find out about her? She has a boyfriend. In real estate, and uh, she's very excited about taking a trip to Hawaii with him. Mm -hmm. And uh, John's not entirely on board with that, but he, he manages to bite his tongue. Um, mm. He says, uh, you're going away with a man you're not married to? I thought yeah. I raised you better. She seems to have a steady job, but I, I didn't hear what it was in. Um, yeah, and I they didn't say where she lived, did they? No, I don't recall. Yeah. So I guess bits of her uh, life will come out. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We'll see how quickly the Perkins family finds out Joe's alive. Yeah, yeah. And sort of what circumstances. I, I mean, like, I was a bit worried um, in this episode because Jade took a really, really long time to get to the memorial service. And I thought maybe she'd been taken prisoner by the Russians or something like that. Mm. But she was just running late, I guess. So Yeah. I don't, like they're the still Russians out there. have backed off yeah. a little bit, but yeah. yeah, they're out there. So yeah, they could be following Kelly, Jade, and Joe, really. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know if there's going to be any kind of kerfuffle with Dominic being at the service, or if she'll just stand there quietly in she the back. She just seems to be sort of hiding in the shadows a little bit, kind, mm -hmm. of, kind of behind a pillar. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, we'll probably have a few more scenes of uh, the memorial service uh, in the next episode. And I'm looking forward to Tad digging out his little clipping that he got from the Lockridge uh, mm -hmm. fireplace and uh, looking at this coin and, and realizing that the coin came from uh, the Capwell collection. Mm -hmm. Kelly's asked him to go and dig up uh, a list of the dates on the stolen coins. Yes, yeah. She suspects already it's one of their stolen coins, so... So it'll be that'll be interesting, and it'll, and it'll be interesting, I think, when when Mason is brought into that conversation as well. We haven't seen Mason for a couple episodes, and I miss Mason. He's uh, he's one of the more fun characters, I think. And Brad the Porter did mention yeah. that Mr. Lockridge may have dropped the coin, so Kelly knows. Yeah, she Warren knows dropped this where coin, it... and she's already kind of thought that both the Lockridges might have been involved in the theft, so. She's already zeroed in a little bit mm -hmm. on on Warren, and add that to what Ted Ted uh, you know has. Yeah, I think they're going to figure out very quickly that Warren stole those coins. And if they talk to to Summer, and um, she also confirms his sketchy He's got tons behavior, of them everywhere. You know, and tells about his burnt hand and stuff. I mean, it could be. Yeah, could she's be already. Big yeah, that's right. Because actually, Kelly already knows about the burnt hand. Yeah. She just hasn't linked it to anything yet. So now this could possibly lead to a little bit of tension, I would think, between Lakin and Ted as well. Mm -hmm. If they're zeroing in on Warren, who of course is yeah. Lakin's brother. Because Mason, I think, would insist on pressing charges, even yeah. though they could get the coins back. Well, the other stuff is gone, I guess. I could see Mason going going head head long into this. Um, there doesn't seem to be a lot of love lost between um, Warren and, and Eden as well. So, yeah. Someone mentioned in this episode that it was Sophia's coins. Mm. So that's which is interesting because if she had like Spanish galleon coins and things, maybe she got them from Lionel. From you know, well, she appears to have gotten a bracelet from him. Gotten some, you know, if he's scuba diving. Uh, searching out wrecks, you know, maybe he's done this before, and uh, found some coins 
from another wreck that he yeah that he discovered. So anyway, it's possibilities. These are all things that we may find out in episode fifty-eight. Mm -hmm. So we'll see you then. See ya. Welcome back. Hello. We've watched episode 58 of Santa Barbara. Original air date, October 17th, 1984, my dad's birthday. Hmm. Warren realizes he's one coin short. He looks for it in the house for a while, but eventually Summer tells him uh, that Kelly has his coin, because mm -hmm. the porter found it and told, uh, told Kelly his name before Summer could cover up for him. Yes. John cries over the photo of Joe at his memorial service. Mm -hmm. Wishes he could have made up with Joe before his death. Kelly, at the service, um, tells Peter she doesn't know who Dominic is when he asks who that is in the corner with the fake beer. Yeah. Um, Cece arrives, but pretty much only to urge Kelly to come home now that this nonsense is over. Uh, Jade finally manages to tell Marissa and Amy that Joe is alive. Mm -hmm. um, and Kelly takes them to see Joe. He's happy to see Amy. Yeah, very happy reunion in that barn. Mm -hmm. uh, Kelly tells Joe what she's learned about the fire in the pawn shop, uh, and also that Warren had one of the coins that they think is from the robbery. Mm -hmm. She also... Um uh, has already talked to Ted about looking it up. So she is already on the case mm -hmm. They found that there was a matching coin yeah. on the list of stolen items, but that there were actually 900,000 of those coins minted. So yeah. they can't for sure tie it in with the robbery. Yeah. Um, Joe, uh, Kelly plays uh, Cruz's eulogy for Joe, and then uh, Joe uses the tape recorder to record a message for Cruz. Yeah. Um, Kelly had also tells Ted that Warren had the coin. Now, he's avoided telling her about uh, where he found the burnt newspaper, mm -hmm. and she had kind of avoided telling him who, who had the coin, but eventually she does admit it was Warren, but he yeah. doesn't then go ahead and say, oh, I found this paper at the Lockridge's. Mm -hmm. He's still trying to protect the family, I guess, for Lakin's sake. But, yeah, I um, think so. I think that's going to come out. And I think you're right. That's probably going to come between him and Lakin. Yeah, I think so. Mm -hmm. And then Sailor Joe, still dressed in his Russian <laughs> sailor outfit, and Kelly check into the presidential suite at the Capo Well Hotel. Yes. And Kelly had taken the opportunity, went up the, at the mansion to swipe a couple of bottles of wine. Now Amy takes the Perkins family, minus John, so Amy and uh, Marissa and Jade, to the airport to meet her beau, because mm -hmm. he's going to spend a few days in Santa Barbara before they jet off to Hawaii on their big romantic trip. Yeah. Um, he says she's not coming with him on the trip, and that uh, he's fallen in love with one of their other co-workers, I guess. So. Yeah, and we can tell right away that he's probably not great boyfriend material, because he kind of <laughs> swaggers off the plane in these sunglasses. Mm -hmm. and, uh, he was well cast because yeah. immediately we knew this guy was not the no. same guy she had described to her no. family in the previous episode. Yeah. And um, so he says, oh, there's no reason this should affect our working relationship. But I think Amy pretty much quits. And so I think yeah, Amy's I think so. going to be staying in Santa Barbara. It's not going back to where yeah. it was. Uh, Cece tells Santana he never wants to see her again. Mm -hmm. That's the long and the short of it. Santana tells Cruz she's going to L.A. And then, uh, basically, Cruz comes clean about the fact that he knew all about Gina uh, from his investigations. But yes. Cece had kind of asked him not to say anything. Yeah. So she says they can both leave her alone. Mm -hmm. uh, she goes to L.A. and encounters Gina's caretaker, who says that she has gone to the Caribbean on a very last-minute trip. Mm -hmm. uh, that he believes was arranged for by by C.C. Capwell or someone that she realizes is C.C. So, um... Now, we, we realize that Gina's not really in the Caribbean. No. You know, she's that she's in, in the Mediterranean, I think. Or, yes, or in yeah. Europe or something. So, yeah. 
Yeah, so I don't know if Santana may have a wild goose chase there. Unless Gina's still at the airport and yeah, she stops her well, we from leaving completely. Uh, Summer mentions to Eden about Lionel's lecture series. Um, Lionel spends the day uh, working on his lecture and mm -hmm. uh, practicing little skits with his, his various masks. Yep. And trying bits on Augusta. And uh, the manifest arrives from the Amanda Lockridge. Mm -hmm. And he quickly phones a friend, whose name I didn't quite catch. Um, but he says, so oh, it's better than we could have hoped for. Two Go Goyas, two Van Dykes, Fragonard, Holbeins, a Da Vinci, a whole bunch of then unknowns, Monet, Cezanne, Pizarro. And he says to whoever he has on the phone, it's time for you to make an appearance. Right, so... I don't know quite what he has up his sleeve. I, you know, as I've said before, I can't imagine those paintings would be in very good condition after being under the sea in a lost shipwreck. Mm -hmm. One thought I had originally was it was a someone who's going to help him dive, but the the way the conversation went, it, it didn't quite seem like that. Mm -hmm. So, um, Augusta tells Lionel that Brick was a lion tamer. Mm -hmm. When he asks about their ride, their ride together, and he says, "Oh, that's good training for this family." Yes, I guess I think he's part of some complex plot of Minx's. Yeah, which may well be. We kind of are thinking. We're that thinking too. that too, but I, I haven't yet got much of a handle on what that could possibly be. Well, uh, Augusta takes a phone call uh, and uh, takes a message for Lionel, and uh, the message is, "The ship you ordered is ready." So she's wondering what that's about. I don't know yeah, why she doesn't put two and two of... together. He obviously needs a ship to get out to the rack, right? So, yeah, yeah. So um, uh, while Lionel is giving his talk later on that evening, Eden arrives and watches, and uh, Lionel throws in some lines from one of the poems that he left for her previously. Mm -hmm. And then uh, later when Eden's at her car, she finds a note from Lionel saying to meet him at the museum at 9 o'clock. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting that he thinks she'll come, but I think she will too. Yeah, I think she will. Yeah, so I don't know if Eden's just intrigued, or if she has other reasons for stalking Lionel. Well, I, I think she wants to see, sort of, I, I think she wants to see why all this started, and how, where it's going to go. It, it is a curiosity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess so, I guess it's kind of adventure she left Santa Barbara to have, so I guess... Yeah. Yeah. And I, I, I think she's time. intrigued by Lionel Lockhart. He is an interesting character. So. And that is that is pretty much all that happened in this episode. Yeah, we didn't see the Russians again. We nope. didn't see I Ginger mean, we again. We saw a lot of the eulogy, but not much, obviously, plot-wise moved forward there. Yeah, so. although I, I am expecting with uh, Joe and Kelly in that presidential suite and the two-way mirror, there could be some interesting plot developments there. Mm -hmm. I don't know if Peter just checked it daily to see who's, what's going on, but he may well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So who else knows about that room? Uh, Veronica mm -hmm. and Lionel. Mm -hmm. so we will see who sees Kelly and Joe first. Yeah. When we watch episode 59 of Santa Barbara. See you. Bye-bye. Welcome back. Hello. We've watched episode 59, originally aired October 18th, 1984. Kelly and Joe have a romantic evening in the Capwell presidential suite. Uh, Peter finds out that Kelly has booked the suite. Mm-hmm. Uh, Veronica also mentions that Mason was asking about the $10,000 checks that he's been writing. He was uh, annoyed at Veronica. Uh putting your nose into his business, although you'd think he'd be happy to get forewarning about Mason. Yes. And Peter takes his gun with him as he goes to the Capwell Hotel to uh, see what's going on in the presidential suite. And the last time we saw him, he was going into the linen closet with the two-way mirror. Now, he already was taking his gun out before Veronica came in to tell him. So I wonder what he had planned for that gun. I think he's just not worried about gi uh, Ginger, I would think. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm thinking, too. I mean, he assumes Joe's dad, I assume. Mm-hmm. So, 
Warren gets upset with Summer again for not covering for him with Kelly and uh, when the bellhop said that he was in there. Yeah. Um, Jade and Amy go to a bar we haven't seen before. And then Summer and Warren come up, mm -hmm. come into that same bar. Um, Summer suggests to Warren that she could just ask Kelly for the coin back. Yeah. Which, of course, is not Warren's problem, really. No, no. Plus, uh, he doesn't want her to draw more attention to the coin as well. Mm -hmm. Rick shows up there, and I'm not quite sure why. Um... Because he doesn't have a drink there. He, he meets Summer. Um, and then he witnesses uh, a real estate agent hitting on Amy, who's quite mm -hmm. drunk. Yeah. And going on about how she can't trust real estate agents. So uh, Jade tries to get Amy out of there. But uh, the real estate agent keeps trying to pull her back. So Brick uh, tries to help. And the guy takes a swing at Brick. And then Brick knocks him out. Yeah. So Brick ends up uh, taking Jade and Amy home. Yes. And playing on the jukebox at that uh, new restaurant or bar, I guess, uh, is Bruce Springsteen's Dancing in the Dark. Yeah. So I almost wondered if, um, as we've, we're moving out of the summer season, of course, California's always got pretty nice weather, um, if we'll be moving indoors to this, this bar, which seems like a bit of a hangout. It mm. doesn't seem to me to be as upscale as La Mesa. But as, as opposed to hanging out at the beach bar. Yeah. Yeah, because oh, it couldn't have been, it didn't seem to me that it was like a really, um, you know, hardcore bar because Jade was there. And of course, Jade is underage. Mm -hmm. So it, it probably was more of a... a more of a restaurant. Yeah, kind of more of an informal restaurant the bar, with a bar. Yeah. Yeah, I guess we'll find out the name of it. Um... The only other place I can remember is the State Street Bistro, and that mm. doesn't look like a bistro, really. So. No. But this place had gold. This was the place with gold tablecloths, was mm -hmm. it? Or was mm -hmm. it up from last time? Um, Marissa uh, talks to John about Joe, and she's trying to get him to say that she believes he was innocent before yeah. she'll tell him Joe is alive, and I guess she got enough out of him uh, from his, his remorse that... Uh, she couldn't take it any longer and told him that Joe was alive and in hiding. Yes. Yes. And it looks like he's going to keep Joe's secret. I think so. I think, um, you know, he, his his grieving was somewhat, I, I would almost say selfish, because when she tells him, he says, oh, thank goodness, I have another chance. So it's kind mm. of all about him and... Um, you know, his his ability to kind of make up for things. But even so, I, I think he really actually did need to hear that because he was suffering quite a bit. Mm hmm Yeah. I, hopefully he won't accidentally mess things up for Joe. Yeah. I mean, Peter's going to find out very quickly. Yeah, so yeah, I think the Peter's game's going to be up. The, the problem. Yeah. A Mason uh, is wondering if his mother called. Mm -hmm. uh, he tells Eden that she always calls on my birthday, and this is, uh, you know, it's evening. The whole episode is, it's after dark already, and she hasn't called, so. Actually, I think it was that she always calls on her birthday. Sorry, on her birthday, right, right. Because I think if it had been Mason's birthday, it would have been a little bit more of a right, deal. Right, right. Yeah. He, he had previously mentioned that she called him on his birthday birthday, but this yeah. is specifically her birthday. Um, although, didn't he say a couple weeks ago he hadn't talked to her in two years? So, mm -hmm. Or a couple of episodes ago. So that doesn't So maybe she skips up. a birthday every once in a while. Mm -hmm. um, and then they talk about Cece and Santana a bit, and uh, Mason, I think it's Mason, tells Eden uh, he's not quite sure if that's still stable, so... Um, Eden says she always thought Santana was slated for Mason. Mm -hmm. So I guess even as they were growing up as kids, Mason was the only only one contemplating that he might end up with Santana. Yeah. Uh, she tells Mason that she has a date with a mysterious stranger. Mm -hmm. And um, Santana tells Cece that she's back from her from L.A. and somehow her son is in the Caribbean. Yeah. So she says that he can't keep her from her son. And he says, I can and I will. Yeah, so 
a very arrogant attitude from CC about this whole thing and really no empathy at all for Santana's situation. Mm -hmm. And as, as that scene ends, Mason comes around the corner and it's not clear how much of it he, he's heard. No. So, um, Mason reminds CC that uh, there's a charity ball for the symphony that they're hosting. I think mm -hmm. he said at the house, or did he say I the hotel? I thought he said at the house. It sounded like the house. Yeah. Uh, CC says he's got too much to think about, so he hands that over to Mason. Mason, trying to, you know, dig at things, mm -hmm. says, oh, shall I get Santana to do the decoration? And he says, I don't think she'll want to do any more decorating for us. No, no. So... Um, then Eden shows up, and she's all dressed up for her, her date. Uh, she says, tells her dad she has a date with a very interesting man. And Cece says the, he should be picking you up at the door. Yeah. And uh, Eden says, I don't think he would come to our front door. <laughs> Maybe he's afraid of you. <laughs> uh, so I May hmm? Oh, I was going to say, I thought it was kind of funny in this scene that when um, this whole interlude starts... Eden's wearing this very, um, very formal sort of green dress, and Mason comments on how dressed up she is for the evening. And then when she goes out, she's wearing a whole different, even more formal outfit. So mm -hmm. uh, she's, it seems like she's changed her outfit a couple times for this meeting with Lionel. Mm -hmm. um, so then Mason goes to see Santana. And he first uh, he wants to talk about his mother and how he doesn't know where she is and no one in the family seems to care that she's possibly missing. Um, they end up having some wine and she ends up crying in his arms because she kind of breaks down over the whole thing even though she hasn't told him anything about Brandon um, and really not about Cece yeah. breaking up with her either. I actually really liked this scene between Mason and Santana because Mason opens up uh, a lot more than we've seen him open up um, in the past, I thought. You know, he says that he knows that everywhere he goes he's this little dark cloud that no one's really happy to see. And he mentions that, um, he mentions how kind of alone he feels that he seems to be the only one who who cares about the fact that Pamela hasn't phoned. Mm -hmm. And um, it seemed to me to be the first scene we've really seen in which Santana and Mason almost relate to each other um, almost as, as friends, really, because uh, Santana she doesn't tell them about the baby, but she does definitely open up about her emotions. And in the past, especially before she started her... Um, affair with CC, you know, Mason would come over and he'd be very arrogant and he would expect certain things and he was always trying to get a nightcap out of Santana. And it was always this, you know, very sort of cold strategic kind of dance. And, mm -hmm. and Santana would be rolling her eyes and trying to figure out how to get rid of him. And, and this time they actually seemed to need each other's company. Mm -hmm. She pours two big glasses of yeah. wine right at the beginning. Yeah. And I think, you know, talking about storylines that have ended, of which we've had very few, I think the C.C. Santana storyline, the romantic storyline, is definitely over. I yeah, say. I don't think they can recuperate from this, especially since C.C. hasn't really moved a jot in his, in his perception of things. So Mason offers to sleep in Santana's tub in case she needs him to be there. Yeah. She doesn't need that. So he goes home and then, uh, after having had his big glass of wine at Santana's, pours himself a glass of whiskey at the very empty Capwell house. Yeah. She's kind of, uh, I think he's kind of feeling lonely. So. Lionel is getting dressed up and Augusta is suspicious. Yeah. Because uh, he says that he just needs to go back to the museum he to pick up some papers he left there. She says, "Well, you can go in the morning." He says, "Oh, well, they're having a thing in the a thing in the morning is all." And she says, "Is that all?" And uh, he says that Summer gave him a key, and she she finds that suspicious. And then he says, "Oh, I'll fix you up for the evening." 
He puts her on the couch and has her close her eyes and starts massaging her temples and then sneaks out. Yeah. So she wakes up and is not too happy that he's vanished. Well, and she can't help but notice that he's dressed to the nines. He's not, he hasn't <coughs> just sort of thrown on a windbreaker and gone off to get his papers. Yeah, just a, a quick trip. Um, then Augusta finds out from Warren that Kelly Capwell has one of the coins, so she's horrified by that. Yeah. Uh, the museum is dark. Uh, Lionel's there skulking amongst the displays. and Eden enters slowly and cautiously, and Lionel turns on the lights and says, Eden? And she says, Lionel Lockridge, I thought it was you. And that's how we left things. Yeah, it'll be really interesting to see how that scene plays out because she's heard um, all of these very sentimental sorts of comments he's been making at her mother's grave. Plus, but he's also been sending her poetry mm -hmm. and little items of affection. So it's kind of interesting to see how this is going to go. Yeah. I think that's it for this episode. So we'll I find out so. how Lionel and Eden's meeting goes when we watch episode 60. See you later. Welcome back. We've watched episode 60. Original air date, October 19th, 1984. I'm wearing my CC Capital glasses. In honor of... It. Of Paul Burke. Yes. Uh, Brick carries Amy home. John doesn't uh, trust Brick at first. No. Um, Marissa suggests that Amy stay in Santa Barbara for a few days. I just think that just might happen. I think so. And then Marissa says that John is staying over a couple for a couple of nights. Mm -hmm. so I think Amy and Jade are happy about that. Yeah. So the Perkin family is reunited, and they both they all know that Joe is alive. So yeah. They must. Happy have, times. Must have told each other. At some point, yeah, that we didn't see that they all know each yeah. know Joe is alive. Uh, Augusta and Warren argue about the fact that Kelly has a coin. Yes, Augusta wants to send Warren to Europe. Yeah, so she's thinking he could be arrested at any second. Yes, he says that there were over nine hundred thousand of those coins minted. Yes, so um, he's not worried. He's not worried they can tie it in to one of the capital coins. That's what he's saying right now, anyway. I, I mean, I think he's acting very worried. I mean, he's drunk a lot of the time. As we've already stated, he's not a happy drunk. Um, we will see him a little bit later in this episode being an unhappy drunk. So, um, yeah. Uh, he's, he's talking a good line to Augusta, maybe so... She won't worry so much, or she won't bother him so much, but I, I think he's concerned mm -hmm. about this. It's interesting he doesn't want the, their help with this. Yeah. Augusta asks Brick to take her to the museum, which yeah. makes sense. Uh, he says he's working for Minx, and she says, well, Minx is asleep. He goes, yeah. okay, I'll get the car. Uh, at the museum, Lionel talks about how beautiful Eden is, how he's been looking for the perfect woman. Mm -hmm. his, the search has ended. Um, Eden says, basically, she would never see a married man. No. And he calls her Sophia, and she asks if, if he knew her mother. And he says yes. And she says, well, this has to be the last time we see each other. Goodbye. And he follows up with au revoir. Mm -hmm. So he's still planning to see her again in some way. He seems to be in almost a bit of a fugue state because he ac accidentally calls her Sophia actually twice mm -hmm. in this exchange. So I'm not quite sure what's going on with him, mm -hmm. really. Um, Augusta arrives and he's kind of just, you know, lolling around in the museum. Mm -hmm. And uh, she uh, kind of snaps him out of it a bit and they go for a bit of a walk, stroll around the museum. And yeah. uh, tells her how beautiful she is. Then a guard shows up, doesn't recognize Mr. Lockridge at first, and mm -hmm. he introduces as Augusta, Augusta, as Augusta, uh, something from Albuquerque. Yeah. Augusta Smith, I think. 
Uh, and then Augusta tells Lionel that Kelly has one of the coins. Mm -hmm. Everyone knows. Everyone in the family knows, finally. Except Lakin, I guess. Uh, Mason tells Veronica that he got a note from accounting uh, about all of Peter's $10,000 checks. Mm -hmm. And Veronica says, well, if they're from the real estate account, they must be for real estate. Yeah. So I think she... I think she must know Peter's stealing money. But yeah. She yeah. smoothly covers uh, for him, or at least doesn't, you know, give him away. Yeah. Uh, then Mason says he'd like her to keep an eye out for anyone who might be getting a payoff. Yes. So that's interesting. Yeah. So um, Veronica mentions that uh, he goes out every day with a briefcase and then comes back, and an hour later, Ginger shows up. Yes. So, well, he says Kelly's dressmaker shows up. And Mason remembers meeting her, so he knows mm -hmm. what she looks like. And then later, Ginger has got a hold of... Uh, Mason has got a hold of Ginger's rap sheet. Yeah. <coughs> Cause untied. So, he must know her entire history at this point. He seems pretty impressed with all the things she's done. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then Mason's mother calls. Now, I have to say, I did not remember this at all mm -hmm. from my original viewing of the show. Um, and uh, they have a very brief chat, and then he asks where she is, and she says she's got to go and hangs up. Yeah. So, I think this, well, this is very weird. Yeah. But oddly enough, Mason has planned for such an eventuality because he's had his own phone tapped. And he quickly calls up uh, one of his investigators and says, did you get a trace? Yes. And the answer is yes. The call came from a phone booth in Santa Barbara. Yeah. So, so we know that Pamela is in Santa Barbara. We don't know anything else really about her. That really is yeah. an, odd, an odd thing. Yeah. Um, Eden shows up and calls him Mace, which I, I found fun. Yeah. Uh, and wants to know about Sophia. Mm -hmm. And Mason says that his mother took it hard when Cece asked for a divorce, and then later when she heard about the other woman. It sounds like Sophia may have started seeing Cece before he divorced Pamela. Yes. And he says she was a genuinely nice person. Mm -hmm. Eden asked if Mason was at the wedding. He said it came very suddenly. Mm -hmm. And, uh... He says she was a consummate hostess, a veritable social butterfly, and she loved the water, which is ironic since she died in a boating accident. Mm -hmm. So this is the first time we've heard exactly how Sophia died. Yes. Uh, Eden wonders if she might have been married before, and Mason says he doesn't think so. Mm -hmm. And then he mentions that Eden looks a great deal like Sophia. Yes. And, and not just that she... Looks like her, but she has all the same mannerisms. She has the same way of moving. Mm -hmm. It's actually quite a... I really enjoyed this conversation between Eden and Mason mm -hmm. because we okay. kind of learned a little bit more about both of them, and it was affectionate. They've been a bit competitive since Eden got home, and I think we're going to see that competitive side quite a bit more as the series goes on, but he's little moments between them are really nice to see as well. Mm hmm And it's interesting that Mason had affection for Sophia. Yeah. So, uh, Ted, Danny, Lakin, and Jade check out the motel space, and I guess Danny's supposed to be working on it, but he's been pretty busy. Yeah. Um, they didn't seem to do much of anything but sit around during the, the time we saw them there. Yeah. Um, Ted and Lakin end up hanging out there together for a while. Ted asks Lakin if Warren has a coin collection, and mm -hmm. she says he doesn't. Um, and then Ted mentions that Warren used to come by to see Channing. Mm -hmm. Ted takes Lakin home to get a sweater, and uh, Ted has a quick talk with Warren mm -hmm. um, about Kelly following in Joe's footsteps to look for the real killer. Um, and then uh, Ted uh, won't tell Warren where Kelly is living now. Mm -hmm. And then the lake in the walks and says, oh, she's living with Ta Sally Taylor on Anapamu. So, um, didn't really think about this earlier, but just now I'm thinking, I bet Warren's going to try and break in and steal that coin. Yeah. 
because it kind of fits with his pattern, and that would solve everything, right? Because well. then the F, well, I mean, then they would still suspect him, but there'd be no more evidence. Mm -hmm. Unless they catch him, of course, that would be... Or yeah. Kelly's not there because she's banging Joe. That's true, but where does the coin? Yeah. Um, I have to say, you know, it's been really interesting for me watching sort of Warren's evolution um, since the beginning of the series when he was kind of a braggart beach bum to suddenly having... You know, we're seeing him as a somewhat angry drunk, and in this scene, he was actually almost a little bit sinister because Ted walks in to um, the dark living room. A dark living room, and there's Warren sitting there in the dark. Mm -hmm. Ted doesn't Broody. see him at first; he kind of yeah. jumps when he sees Warren sitting yeah. there in the corner. Yeah. So I think I think Warren is definitely planning to break in to um, where he knows Kelly is and try and steal the coin back. But I actually am not sure this is going to be a very successful enterprise or, or that it's going to turn out quite the way he's hoping. I mean, we'll see. Mm -hmm. uh, then later, Ted and Lakin are kissing. It's quite late. So she says she needs to go. And he says that he loves her, mm -hmm. wants to be with her, and she feels the same way. Yeah. Uh, Meanwhile, the other Capwell sibling is in the presidential suite with Joe. Mm -hmm. And uh, Peter's been spying on the suite, but he got there just after Joe went into the bedroom. So he sees Kelly. She calls to Joe saying, you know, that he's a great lover or something like that. And so the entire night he's spying on them, but the only person who ever comes back out into the living room area is Kelly. Yeah. You know, to get more champagne or whatever. And uh, he never finds out that it's Joe. Mm -hmm. So he says, oh, that Kelly. She must not even have loved that Joe that much, moving on to another guy so yeah. soon after his death. Yeah. So uh, then Joe finally comes into the living room, and then we see that Peter's fallen asleep. Yeah. With his gun in his hand. Yeah. Which is a little weird. Uh, and then uh, in the morning, Peter wakes up. We don't see anyone in the living room. He quickly calls for a master key, and a bellboy brings it up, and he lets himself into the presidential suite, uh, carrying his gun. And he heads towards the bedroom, and that is how it, things ended. Yeah. So the question, of course, we're left with is, what is he going to find in the bedroom? I think the bedroom will be empty, because Joe and Kelly will have already left to go That's on to the next stage of the investigation. They look like kind of an abandoned... Yeah thing so uh which means if kelly goes back to sally's place maybe warren will she find might find more in there yeah well it's more it seemed like it was morning yeah just it just felt like morning so well it was four in the morning when joe woke up mm. and woke up kelly and then they had um a little bit of Chasing and love making in the living room all while Peter was asleep. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, oh yeah, that's right. So he did come in and go out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. While Peter was sleeping. So they've been up since four, basically. So. Yeah. So there, I doubt they're there. Yeah. So, but it's a bit scary that Peter's like stalking around with a gun now. Yeah, and you know I don't know quite what security measures were like in the 80s. We've already commented on the fact that security at the Capwell Manor seems to be a little less than we might have expected. But certainly today, in a hotel, you'd have cameras everywhere, and there would be footage of some guy stalking around with a gun. That doesn't seem to be the case then. Yeah, well, maybe he'll put it away when he finds the empty mm -hmm. room, mm -hmm. but we don't know. I assume he had the gun for Ginger originally. Yeah, so. yeah. It's still a bit mysterious why he's he's got this gun at all. Mm hmm Yeah. All right, that does it for week 12 of Santa Barbara. And we will be back uh, for week 13 and episode 61. Yeah. See you. Bye-bye. This week's spotlight is on Rosemary Forsyth, who played Dominic on Santa Barbara. Rosemary Forsyth was born on July 6, 1943, in Montreal, Quebec, to David Forsyth and model Rosemary Collins. 
She studied drama in high school and college. In her teens, she worked as a model and studied acting at the Wynne Handman Drama School of New York. Life magazine reported that Forsyth was plucked out of a magazine by Universal, then sent to New York for 18 months to act in TV, summer stock, and anywhere she could find seasoning jobs. Forsyth has been married to Alan Horwitz, Ron Warrench, Michael Tolan, and Robert Euro, and once shared a home with David Jansen, star of Richard Diamond, Private Detective. She is the mother of Alexandra Tolan. Her first credit is on the daytime serial The Doctors in 1963. Before Santa Barbara, she appeared in TV series and movies throughout the 60s, 70s, and 80s, such as Route 66, It Takes a Thief, Columbo, Night Gallery, Mannix, Barbary Coast, Charlie's Angels, The Incredible Hulk, WKRP in Cincinnati, Fantasy Island, and Magnum P.I. In 1980, she appeared in 67 episodes of Days of Our Lives as Laura Horton, the mother of Jennifer Horton, who would later be played by Santa Barbara's Jade Perkins, Melissa Brennan. Beginning with episode 4, Forsyth appeared in 40 episodes of Santa Barbara as Dominic, the mysterious witness who could clear Joe Perkins of the murder of Channing Capwell. As her character was disguised as a man throughout her run, her name did not appear in the early credits, until after this fact had been revealed to the audience. After Santa Barbara, Forsyth appeared in shows throughout the 1890s and 2000s, including General Hospital, Remington Steel, Dallas, Simon and Simon, Mr. Belvedere, and Ally McBeal. Forsyth was elected to the Board of Directors of the Screen Actors Guild in 2003. Her most recent credit is a TV movie called Sweet Nothing in My Ear from 2008.